everyone. This is Chala Dinkoy, CEO and founder of The Repositioning Expert. Welcome to another edition of my podcast, The Naked Marketing Podcast, where we get naked and honest and authentic about our marketing mistakes. And today we are getting honest with Mark Jewell. Welcome, Mark. Hi, Chala. It's super cool to be on here with you. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the invite. Well, thanks for getting honest and naked with us today. So tell us who you help and what you do for a living. So uh, my company is called Thrive Today and our primary audience, our primary target that we work with are um, corporate agribusinesses. So think of anybody who makes something or sells something to a farmer for the end use of the production of fruits and vegetables and, and livestock and all those things. So kind of the middle part of the food chain um, or anybody on the backside of that who processes it, uh, anything that comes um, off the farm. So that's our, those are our primary targets. Within that, you could even drill down a little bit. We do a ton of work with uh, sales leadership, sales people, or executive level leadership within that range. So you're a sales coach for the agro business. We that we do, we do a ton of that. Yes, that is a okay. that's, and that's that's honestly probably our number one entree into the the companies. Um, really, at the end of the day, we get into a lot more of say love life coaching. So companies will come to us looking to buy the tactics, the skill sets. Uh, they want to solve the problems of our, <clears throat> our people need to close more deals, or we need them calling on more people or making more calls or whatever the case may be. Uh, at the end of the day, we found typically has nothing to do with somebody's ability to close. It's usually around their mindset. So at the end, of, we're really more on the, the life coaching or mindset coaching uh, of whether it's salespeople, leadership, or, or the executives that lead them. As someone who has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on sales coaching my hats off to you my friend so were you a farmer how did you get into this niche i am i am a farm kid in kind of a, a weird way to be honest I, I grew up very rural in uh, about three and a half hours south of the canadian border in minnesota um my dad was a he was a wholesale fishing bait salesman and wow. so <laughs> uh, my job, I, I, effectively, I grew up on a, on a leech farm. Uh, we, we sold leeches wholesale for fishing bait. That was our main business growing up. And so we, if you want to talk about a very niche, if you want to talk about a sucky, sucky wow. way to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> so, uh, but that was, that was our main business. It's really where I learned a lot about business. Um, but growing, growing up rural, you know, that, that was a very seasonal business. So I would spend the rest of my time picking rock or milking cows or baling hay or doing something for local farmers. So I always had an affinity and an understanding for agriculture, the importance of it, um, and, you know, and a love really for the people who do it. So I, I got a degree in agricultural education with the intention of I wanted to get into corporate training at some point in my career. And then I would go and found myself in some sales roles early on in my career, learning the industry, learning the space. And long story short, I ended up eventually selling enterprise level training deployments of e-learning mm. uh, for different types of things. So I learned, that's where I learned the sales process. I learned how to sell, I learned how to manage the complex sale, which is multiple decision makers across a, you know, potentially a large organization. I got very good at that. And uh, then I just, I had this need to get my, my message, my content, my things in, in front of people. So about eight years ago, I cut loose from that and just went on my own. I love it. So isn't it different working for selling somebody else's things versus selling yourself? 100%. Yeah. You know, one of the challenges, I mean, we, I was effectively selling e-learning or e-learning systems prior to this, you know, going, going back a decade or, or so. Um, and it's, it, it's necessary and it's effective, especially when you're doing significant levels of technical training, product training, you know, product rollouts, et cetera. And to this day, we still haven't found a great way to do, you know, to still get that done in a different way. It, it's just, let's be honest, it's boring. Mm -hmm. It's not sexy. It's mm -hmm. not fun. It's not transformational. And I wanted to do sexy, fun, and transformational. <laughs> so I was, and it was inevitable. I would need to make that switch at some point. It's so funny. So when you started your own business, because I'm a niching coach, so I'm intensely aware that when you introduced yourself, which is like 
very few of my guests do this. And I've done your, like my 63rd guest on this podcast. Sure. Um, you are very clear on your target. Did that, did you fall into that niche or was it just by osmosis of just being there and geographic proximity or was it a strategic, uh, you looked at several, you did the whole, you know, research and you went after it. I, I will say um, I, I'm not your typical research person. I'm more of a, a run and jump off the cliff and then acquire the parts to build the airplane on the way down. That's kind of my mm-hmm. style. So, and that's very much what I did. In, in a way, I kind of got lucky though, right? Because I had this network after a, you know, a decade, 12 year long career at that point in the agriculture industry. So I, I had the professional connections <clears throat> and I knew who to call. Uh, plus, I'd had the benefit of being in a sales role, serving that industry prior. So I had a network that was pre-existing, <clears throat> and then you know the ability to okay say okay my non-compete says I can't go here, but there's all these ancillary places that I can go. And you know I'd spent at that time you know 15 years building up a network, you know yeah. between college and early career where there were plenty of people um, that I could you know reach out to, and and so there was the niche of of agriculture. Yeah. It took me a few years to really start niching down and, and niching down even further within agribusiness to say, yes, I'm comfortable working with, you know, specifically salespeople or, um, you know, and, and even most of our customers will be on what I'd say, like the crop focused arena. Mm-hmm. We've had some clients that are more on, you know, like the livestock production or something like that. And, and that's great. I'm actually developing another coach right now. Uh, his name is uh, John, he's the cowboy coach, and he was a real cowboy, and he rode bulls, and and so he's one now who I'll position with our livestock producers or or companies selling into the livestock arena to do more coaching um, from him as opposed to me. I'm just not as relevant. Uh, I don't understand the lingo in that space, and one thing that's very important, I think, I suppose this is important in any niche, but specifically in, in the agribusiness, agriculture space, if you don't speak the language, you won't last very long. Exactly. In fact, I use aha uh-huh, a horse metaphor for this. It's if you've ever heard of a man called Monty Roberts, he his father used to break horses, and if you've ever seen how it's broken, it's it takes days and it's very painful for both you know the horse and the and the horse breaker. And so what he uh, started following horses in the, in the wild and mimicked their body language and was able to gentle horses and his language that he calls the horse language is called equus so that's what you know we talk about when i do my trainings about how do you pick up the equus of your target industry and for people unlike you who don't know who their target is or have too too many of them or it's just too broad they can't speak equus they they can't not in their marketing not in their outreach not in their speaking to them, like when they're in the same room. So it's fabulous that you've fallen into a niche that's turned out, but it wasn't by accident. You, you had already pre-built that funnel. Exactly. And, and we've and, you know, got in, gotten distracted over the years and, and tried to spring off into other niches or geographic niches that weren't industry focused. And it never works <laughs> or, or it's very hard and it takes much longer and more money than I'm, you know, then I have time or, or the pockets for most of the time. Right. Yeah. Um, and so it's been, um, you know, we've tried a lot of different marketing things, especially in the last couple of years and throughout COVID and in the last year rebuilding from COVID and yeah, it's, you know, it's been, um, uh, an interesting journey trying to figure out the right ways to target the niche and get the conversations and so on and so forth. And uh, so it's been, it's been a fun journey, but we, we continue to, um, in fact, I have a coach and he got me to finally, uh, he got me to finally uh, to just own the fact, uh, like a hundred percent own the fact back in January, believe it or not, of this year, as I was kind of getting distracted again, he said, at what point are you just going to admit that you're the aggro guy? <laughs> and he's European. We would never say aggro, at least not in, in my part of, of, of the United States, but uh, he's I'm like, yeah, I'm the aggro guy. Okay, fine. I got it. And, and it's funny because uh, our business looks a lot different this year than it did last year or prior to last year mm-hmm. and from a headcount standpoint, employee standpoint, et cetera. And uh, we've been able to grow back post COVID. Now we'll, we'll, we're by the end of this year, we'll get 75% back to where we were prior to COVID now with just one and a half people. That's great. Um, so let's talk about marketing. What is it that you're doing right now post COVID to actually get new business? 
Mm -hmm. So the right in this moment, as we speak, I am, I am learning. Well, there's two things. Number one, I, I, I committed, committed to myself, committed to my coaches, committed to my team that we are learning how to be great marketers. That's, okay. and that's just a, a, a huge, it's very timely that you reached out to me when you did, as we're making this decision and just saying, you know, we've always relied on our salesmanship and we're very good at that. We teach that. So we're in integrity with that message and, and that's good. And that, 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 you know, from a marketing standpoint, we don't always think about this as marketing, but that gets us referrals, right? We do have a referral system um, that gets us um, put on stages to speak sometimes. And that's marketing because I'm getting paid or, you know, sometimes we'll do it for free, but usually I get paid to speak and then we get leads from the speaking opportunities. And so that's kind of, that's how we've gotten this far. Uh, what we haven't done well is the digital marketing and how do we really, you know, use email very well? How do we use social media very well, et cetera? So um, the other thing currently is we're just, I'm, I'm on a mission to dominate LinkedIn within my niche and just position as the brand expert around life coaching, sales coaching in, uh, in the agribusiness space. There are certainly other options. Believe it or not, very few coaches, however. So it's kind of a blue ocean space. There's not a ton of what I would say coaches um, available um, at a high at the level that we go to um, within our space. And so it's actually in part it's actually educating people about what what coaching looks like because they're used to just sending their people to a a two day sales training and then they get it <laughs> or they're supposed to get it right, which we know doesn't work. Um, so we've actually kind of been a leader in this space and bringing coaching to the market, specifically the mindset and the life coaching aspects. That's fabulous. I mean, uh, something I call super niching, which is what you're doing, which is pick one industry or interest group and then own one painful, painful, painful problem that they have and become an expert in that is what's called super niching. And that is the number one way that I teach on how to differentiate. So mm -hmm. I am not at all surprised that you don't have a lot of players in the same category that you're competing against, because sadly, that is the number one problem is 86% of corporate buyers can't see a difference between two suppliers. Yeah. In fact, just yesterday, I'm, I'm going through a LinkedIn program right now where we're using a, a software called Connected, K-E-N-N-E, mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to target. I mean, specifically, we're micro-targeting. Um, business development managers, sales team managers, et cetera, within agribusiness type companies. And, and there's even a niche below that within ag retail, which is the people who directly sell things to the farmers. Um, and we've kind of niched into that ag retail space. We have a reputation we know how to do it, we know how to scale it, and uh, we can go there very quickly. Um, but what, what, we, what we're trying to differentiate now, so historically for our business, it was me doing our trainings, but I didn't do, I don't do, I don't use PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And so I make it engaging and fun and interactive, but we don't, we, we, we don't give people an opportunity to hit the snooze button. <laughs> so that was the first different differentiator. Then we added the coaching aspect, which was quite new, <clears throat> excuse me, for the agriculture industry. And then, uh, and, and now that we're starting to see it, you know, a couple of things pop up or our current clients are like, okay, yeah, we've done that. Now what? Um, so we're now really focusing in on being the, the behavior change company mm -hmm. for you know within this space specifically and i changed my uh my pronoun on my linkedin profile yesterday is uh this was advised by our our coach at connected uh to change it to something that sort of differentiated you right other than his and her or them or whatever and uh so i changed it to behavior change wizard mm -hmm. uh, just you know to get attention and say okay well what's a what, what's that mean if that creates a conversation then great Awesome. So tell us about this big, uh, you know, naked marketing mistake that you guys made. Well, gosh, you know, <laughs> I, I, for, for years, um, I've been, I've been practicing the craft of being a good salesperson. That's it. And I have, I have no fear. In fact, you know, when, when I was a kid, I was a young kid. And one of the things that we actually talk about in our programs and I'm a big believer in there's a, a huge part of your subconscious wiring that gets locked in by the time you're seven years old. Uh, so my dad was in a, a, a different industry prior to getting into the fishing bait space, uh, but he was often driving up the driveways to go 
get permission to go, uh, he was a trapper, and to go trap on the, on the land of the people that he'd be talking to. And so since I was as old as I can remember, probably three, one of my first memories are, you know, popping up these days. Um, I, would, I would be riding around with my dad during the day, and we would be having coffee or lunch or, or going into the house of somebody that I didn't know. So this is not abnormal to me. I have no fear <laughs> of picking up the phone or making the ask, right? And that's been, I mean, the, the, I had the, the, the framework for that, and I had to, you know, I've had to work through that and build up that skill set uh, and that certainty over time. Um, but when, if push comes to shove and we need to get dollars in the door, I'll pick up the phone and dial until we get them. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. So when you have that ability, it's very, very easy to not market. <laughs> yeah. Because you still get paid. And it's like, well, I can get here. <clears throat> and <laughs> it really wasn't until my coach kind of laid this out in front of me and, you know, showed us the um, kind of a five-step, you know, progression that companies take. And he's like, what you're doing is fine. Like, you know how to go and do it. If that's what you want to do every day for the rest of your life. And, and, and we call that a level of persistence, right? And just stay after it. We're persistent no matter what, um, you know, we stay after it, but there's no viability. Yeah. No scalability. Yeah. There's no viability, no scalability, no exit because the business relies on my ability. Okay. Right. And my goal is to exit the business within five years. So, um, you know, we have some hefty goals and some things that we're marching toward and, you know, we want to get to a certain amount of annual recurring revenue in the business. And then, you know, when we get there, we can start looking at either partnering or whatever, but, uh, right. You know, as of today, you know, I sort of, I, the big, the big mistake, you know, if I'm standing naked in front of the room and just sharing everything is, uh, I was too lazy to just pack up or pick up my, you know, proverbial pitchfork or shovel and do the work it takes to be a marketer. Uh huh. So what work would that have been? Well, I, you know, for one, I really, I think it's learning some systems, right? Okay. Learning how systems work. And um, so I've been, uh, we, we use active campaign for our email software and I have no, I, until two weeks ago, I had no idea what it could do. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I mean, the, the horsepower, I'm paying $139, I don't know what it is, you know, per month, right, for, for the level that we're at with Active Campaign. I had no idea that it had, you know, that it could machine learn the best time of the day to send an email to someone so that it improves the likelihood that they open, right? If we have to send 200 emails at one time, we pop them out of our CRM tool, uh, which is copper, which is fine. I can see if they open it, but I have no real way to track and no real way to get better uh, and so on and so forth. So, um, so that's one. So, I mean, just learning, you know, email marketing. <clears throat> I went to a, a Brendan Burchard event a couple of years ago and they just said that it's, it's undeniable the highest paid coaches in the industry have the biggest email lists. Yeah. So yeah. next step is how do I grow my email list? <laughs> <laughs> so that's something we're working on, you know, with our LinkedIn campaign right now. And, and we've got some offers out uh, that are, you know, bringing us new, fresh, you know, emails that we can send things to and put them into a marketing sequence based on what they opt in for. So, you know, those are a couple, couple of big ones that, that we yeah. have been looking at recently. That's, that sounds good. Now, everything that, I guess there's a difference between how you and I uh, are looking at sales because... I call everything that happens until they ask the question, how much is it marketing? So even that outreach where you're picking up the phone and reaching out to them to me is marketing. Everything that happens after that question is asked is sales because then you've got to close it. You've got to land that plane. So, so to me, and the reason why, you know, the, the difference is because everything that you're doing as an outreach has to lead into inviting them to something, right? Instead of just saying, hey, buy from me. Hey, I'm here. Hey, this is what I do, right? It's tying it into inviting them to something of value. So that's the way that I, that's that's the difference, but. I like that differentiation. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I, lo I love how aware you are. And of course, we love how honest you are. So what last parting words of wisdom do you have around marketing? <clears throat> You know, there's a there's a, a leader that I follow in the coaching space who put it so eloquently. Uh, it wasn't eloquent at all, but it was blunt. Yeah. It was blunt. <laughs> uh, recently, said, you know, if you want to be successful, you have to learn to master the mundane. Mm. 
And that has kind of been my mantra lately that helps me get through maybe doing some of the things I don't want to do. So mm-hmm. I, I know how to get on a coaching call and help somebody change their business, change their life, um, commit to doing better and or grow. I can get on calls with executives and we can help them put together a better program for their uh, for their team that will be motivating and incentivizes the right behaviors. Uh, so when it comes to the behavior change stuff, I'm good. Uh, when it comes to getting on a, and I, I just as much, if not more actually passion for the sales side of it, as I do the, um, the, the, the delivery, you know, of our training and coaching yeah. and, you know, because it was just like, it was one more thing. It's, it's like when you're, when your bandwidth is maxed out, mm. right. And 